Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a tribute watch launched in 2020. This is the Omega Speedmaster Caliber 321 Chronograph, better known by its nickname, the Ed White. It is dedicated to the memory of the American astronaut who took America's first spacewalk in 1965, and it resembles the reference 105003 that he took on that endeavor. So this is a pre-moon design, and it is differently sized from a standard modern moon watch. It is 39.7 millimeters in diameter. It's 14.1 millimeters thick. From lug tip to lug tip, it is 48 millimeters, and it is a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see it's a bit shorter across the wrist than a moon watch. And it does wear a little bit better on a small wrist also because it has this pivoted end link vintage inspired bracelet, it does wear a little bit easier. The bracelet actually wears like a strap with its downward flexibility. So I could recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference as you see it right here. Now, it is a fairly thick watch, though not as thick as a standard moon watch. You can see it does have a dramatically cantilevered bezel, and that's really what's going to cause a sleeve to get hung up. There's really no other issue because the watch will fit underneath a jacket, and this is not the kind of watch you want to disappear. You want to show this off. Taking a quick look at the bracelet, you can see that has a very minimal taper. It has a conforming end link. It is a pivoted end link. And then it has relatively flat, short cross-section links, again, designed to emulate a vintage bracelet, but very solid with modern construction so that center links are all solid, removable links are fixed by screws. The whole thing has a robustness to it that is probably the most modern feature of the watch. Vintage bracelets, even when new, weren't this solid. Now we have two little anchoring points. You've got a strap tool spring bar in there with holes outside, so you can insert your strap tool and change the anchoring point of the bracelet inside the clasp to fine-tune the fit. You can also appreciate that we have a vintage Omega logo externally. There's several of those. A thick gauge clasp body and folding clasp, and then twin trigger release. That, again, is also overtly modern. Rolling to the case, you can see that this is not overtly modern. This is the squared off, minimally beveled lug profile that we would have seen on the first three generations of Speedmaster. So very flat, sheer sides, squared off ends, polished lug hoods, satin shoulders. It is finished to a higher degree than a vintage watch, but it's subtle. It's the kind of thing you only notice when you get close. We have pump style pushers. You can see there's no sheer guard for the crown or the pushers. This is not one of the professional models. And then we have that vintage Vintage Omega logo again on the crown. I talked about overtly modern elements. Well, there are a few more to note. First, you can see that the bezel insert is made of ceramic. So you have beloved features like the dot over 90, for example, but this is very much a modern ceramic bezel framing a modern sapphire crystal. It is not a Hesalite. It is not a thermoplastic. We do have the vintage evocative dial with just a little bit of fotina, as though it were a vintage 1960s Omega Speedmaster dial that had aged in benign fashion over the years. We have, of course, the white on black printing and white varnished hands for high contrast. We have a vintage Omega and Speedmaster logo with an applique Omega marquee. And of course, uh, the pre-moon watches that featured caliber 321 generally featured that applied logo. Later, it would be printed. But you could see it too is the vintage design. When we flip it all over, you could see what we came for. Now, this, of course, is the caliber 321. It's Lamagna based. It's based on the Lamagna 2310 rather than the later cam-based Lamagna 1873. All moon watches and pre-moon watches have Lamagna-based movements. This one just features the older one based on the 2310, which was a slow beat column wheel movement that a lot of people like for aesthetic and historical reasons. So you can see that the finishing standard here is actually a little bit better than what you'll get on the current 3861. This is a standard more like the old display case back, caliber 1863. So the, the finishing on the bridges, the levers, the wheels, it's consistent with what you saw on those. Now, these are built in a special workshop. They're slow beat, 18,000 vibrations per hour, manual wind, 55-hour power reserve. You can see a lovely column wheel with a lateral clutch, both 
a tactile pleasure and an aesthetic pleasure. You can also see the 17 jewel movement features some vintage highlights such as a overcoil hairspring. It has a breguet overcoil so it keeps excellent time in every position regardless of where it is on your wrist. There's also a hooking guard for that hairspring. If you look carefully right next to the the little regulator cap that holds the curb pins, you can see that there is a almost like a piece of gold wire that extends out to the edge of the balance. That is there to prevent the overcoil from getting hung up on the regulator in the event that it's shocked. Now you can see the screws are black polished. We actually don't have a Cote de Genève across the bridges. We have a lovely sort of spiral graining, a deeply grooved graining. We have beveling on the side, which is mostly machine finished, but still nicely polished and bright. And then we've got a satination across Across the hoods of all of the steel components of the chronograph and it is quite fetching. All the screw heads have a particularly nice mirror polish to them and again with a 55 hour power reserve you get a little bit more than with the more modern Moonwatch calibers. And thanks to the column wheel you get a really crisp feel. Omega cam movements are quite good uh, but this is exemplary. This is the standard of the world right here. All of that and it is 50 meters water resistant. Reach out to TMASO at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And just to allay any concerns you might have, despite the Fotina, it is still beautifully and brightly loomed.